gotta look within to feel what makes me happy. You're a real talent. To my beautiful friends. My baby girl. I think Nola's a freak. I'm not a freak. You're a sex addict. I'm not a sex addict. Excuse me, miss. Hey, boo. Baby girl. And I'm damn sure nobody's property. My name is Nola Darling. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Not Super Vince. So, um, this is a review for the Netflix series, um, She Gotta Have It. It's based on a Spike Lee movie that came out in 1986. And when I was a kid, I wanted to watch this movie. I tried to watch this movie, but parents, um, it was very hard, so I wasn't allowed to watch it. So, I never, I kind of forgot about it till I heard about the series coming out on Netflix, so I was very interested in watching it, um, and let me tell you, um, I kind of, I binge watched the shit out of this movie the other night, and it is a beautiful series, um, that alone, come, like, telling the story of a black woman, but it's not only about this black girl, this, it's just the story of somebody trying to grow up, you know, um, better herself, and that's that's the way I see it myself. Um, it, 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 well, basically, the story follows the story. Um, it's a story. Nola Darling, who who's dated three men: um, Greer Child, Jamie Overstreet, and Mars Black. Um, Greer Child is played by Damon Wise, and Jamie Overstreet played by uh, Lorik Bent, and Mars Black played by Anthony uh, Ramos. And these three characters, each of them are different, have, are different in their own way. Um, I, I'm going to jump into them later, but we're going to kind of do something different. Um, and she, you also have her friends, um, Shana Lane, uh, played, who played uh, Shamika Epps, uh, Mark Bingham, who played Clor Clorinda, and um, what's the other one? Um, Rachel, who plays uh, Joan Tony Septima, I, I don't know, but it, just like her lovers, each friend have their own different stories. But the one that was drawn out the most out of her friend was um, Shamika. She's basically this mother who she's Jamaican. And she works in this club, and she feels like in order to make more money, she has to go and get a butt injection to make her butt bigger and all that and this stuff is basically what goes goes on here you know even after people it stuff happens in real life that's what i love about spike lee movies there's a lot of stuff that happens in real life he incorporates in this movie and even people even after pe her friends are telling her she's beautiful she still go ahead and do it and it's compelling as a story by itself, um, and there's one part in the movie also um, she, when Nola becomes a teacher, an art teacher in school, and she asks her student to do a drawing, but that basically represents their life. And this kid Reggie draws the cover of Lil Kim, the Lil Kim album when she's just bending over with the um, lingerie on, and it basically represents her life, which <laughs> kind of yeah. This, this is just great writing right there alone. Um, but we jump back to her lovers. Um, you have um, Grill Charles, who's basically a mix of African American, and he's kind of eccentric. He's a phot photographer, and he feels like he's the no, he's all that, you know. And no lush, <laughs> like, the, but somehow he's attracted to Nola because he used to have it easy with women but with Nola it's different and there's more to this guy Greer Charles too um, and the way he interacts with Nola and you jump to Jamie Overstreet uh, who is not only a black man who's made it from the hood to the corporate world but he has his family that he has to deal with that he's he's having problems at home but he's in love with this chick woman Nola and he doesn't know what to do you know but at the end of the day he feels he knows that his family needs him that's where he, he needs to be but in the back of his mind he's still in love with this woman um then you have Anthony Ramos playing Mars Blackman um 
this Mars just alone when, when he showed when he showed up in the movie that his character alone was just out of this world I guess that's why they, he got the name Mars Blackman because his character is truly out of this world um, and his character there's one part in the movie his character he's basically talking about how him and his dad went to a, a basketball game and they were wait uh, it was the Knicks versus the Bulls and him and his dad waited out outside the stadium for hours until Michael Jordan came out to get a signature and he gave him um, his sneakers that was uh, and he signed it so which is right there just it's just great story it made it joined it, it basically there's a certain part of the movie that brings out certain parts of his character and they get each of them have their own uh, scene where they you know they're drawn out the most there's a lot of character I wish that were drawn out the most but it didn't really affect the show that much for me. Um, one 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 scene um, when Nola basically her friend had a art gallery thing going on, and yes, yeah, she was she was nervous. She didn't know how to act, uh, and this one critic who is a white man uh, who goes online and basically criti criticizes her artwork about how it's I guess it's not black enough which is a lot of things it's also something that happens too you know um, when it comes to certain people I'm not saying like people don't study the African culture but at the end of the day like this one thing kind of um, was drawn out to me you know um, and it made sense because Nola was having the conversation with Greer how nowadays it's like certain the white people they they feel like certain things are not black enough, you know. Um, like they've been in your shoes, but they they know how what it is to be black enough. They they decide what the culture is, what's cool enough, what's black enough. So I'm I'm not gonna jump into that, but if you guys see what I'm trying to get at. Um. But as far as the show, um, we're gonna jump to the main character, Nola Darling. Um, she's a struggling artist. Um, she doesn't know what she, what kind of man she wants, so that's why that's the main reason she's dating these three guys, and a woman. <laughs> yeah, she, there's a woman in there too, um, played uh, Opal, who is also one of her lover. But she has a kid, and Nola sees herself with Opal, but the fact that Nola is, I would say, not grown up yet, uh, it kind of push Opal away from her because, you know, she's not ready for somebody who's basically not a, in a way, in a sense, not an adult because Nola is, she's a struggling artist. She's, um, her time, money-wise, she's not there yet, so that's one problem with her, but as far as character, I really love that character of Nola Darling. Um, and again, played by the uh, the Wonder Wise, beautiful actress, beautiful woman, beautiful black sister. And I really enjoyed her character as Nola Wise and how her character is drawn out scene by scene. You know? And there's one scene that she is attacked by this one random dude, you know, and he calls her a black bitch and she goes, and is one thing you. Just cause, uh, one thing, just cause if a woman says no, no means no, you know? And just cause, uh, yeah, it, it kinda sounds stupid, but just cause she wears certain things doesn't mean you have the right to address a woman any way she want. And it, it, that scene kinda shows that in the movie. And she goes out in the street and start putting these posters, you know, my name is not, my name is not, and it, it's, understandable and that that incident alone affected her in ways you know that you would never know and emotionally uh, phys physically and it it brings out her character and put uh, puts um how, how, what else say I would say that it puts this monkey on her shoulder and that affects her daily life. 
I just love this series. Um, I always love Spike Lee movies, and this is a really good one of the really good Netflix series, especially for almost for all black cast. Um, I would suggest um, you guys check it out, like I would say, because Netflix do have these great series, and she gotta have it as one of them. Um, I've seen a few articles um, um, talking bad about this series, but. If you guys sit down and watch this movie, pay attention, you will love it. It is a good series. Um, I'm going to give this series an A. It is a great series. Check it out, guys. And there's just the the direct, the direct way Spike Lee directs this movie, the f filmography, um, makes you want to be part of like the New York lifestyle, you know? The sh how he films the streets and the corners and the sh every thing and the music alone too in the movie. Every time there's a music play they, they give you who played the music and album cover. So if you wanna put I I'm, I already added most of the music to my playlist because I it, it's a lot of good it, the music matches a lot of tone in this movie. That's what I love about this movie. So and just that alone and the the way he directed it makes made made me want to just be part of this New York lifestyle. And once again, guys, as I said before, I'm gonna give this movie a A. Don't forget to check it out on Netflix. And like I'll say, if you don't have a Netflix account, ask a friend, family member, and check it out. Well, guys, that was my review for She Gotta Have It. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will be seeing y'all soon with more reviews and reactions.